Last time, I told you uh, before that sine wave gratings are very popular stimuli in visual psychophysics. Um, one of the reasons why it is so popular is that uh, because of uh, mathematical manipulation is relatively simple. So here is our sine wave grating again with um, low contrast. And by changing the parameters of sine wave, um, we know that we can change it any way we want. So <clears throat> If you change the contrast, um, then uh, you know that the contrast between the light bar and dark bar is quite high in this case. And then you can change the phase orientation and the spatial frequency. So this is one of the reasons why it is so popular um, in uh, visual psychophysics. But secondly, um, you know, the sine wave and its uh, trigonometric function family in general is um, very important because they are fundamental building blocks of any image used in Fourier analysis. So this is the idea that any periodic pattern can be expressed as a sum of trigonometric functions. So about 200 years ago, a French mathematician, Joseph Fourier, um, shown here, um, and then he maintained that any two-dimensional images, no matter how complex they are, can be created from or decomposed into a set of sinusoidal patterns. So according to this analysis, all you need to know is to, well, I mean, all you have to do is to find out the right combination of sine wave parameters, such as um, spatial frequency, contrast, orientation or phase of each sinusoidal component, then add them all together to construct an image you want to create. <clears throat> so using Fourier analysis, we can add any sine wave gratings to create a new image. So here we have four different sine wave gratings with um, you know, different contrast, orientation, spatial frequency, and whatnot. So if we add them together, then we can generate a relatively simple pattern uh, like this. Um, and adding uh, all those four um, sine wave gratings. And this process um, is called Fourier synth synthesis, right? And once you synthesize any image in, or any image, um, in fact, uh, the reverse process is also possible. So you can decompose the pattern into the four sine wave um, creating components. So according to um, you know, Fourier analysis, um, in theory, any image can be decomposed into a group of basic sine wave components using Fourier analysis. For example, um, the digital image shown here uh, consists of 502 by 357 pixels. If we were to perform a Fourier analysis on it, then we will find um, that it is composed of about five, uh, no, 50,000 50, sine wave gratings, each of which have just the right parameters um, in terms of a spatial frequency, contrast, orientation, and whatnot to add up to this image. In a natural scene or image, objects are distinguishable from each other and from their surroundings too. Um, and they are distinguishable by the different variations in light and color that they reflect. So even without color information, like this uh, black and white picture of a cat sitting on the ground here, the uh, variation in luminance alone can convey complex enough spatial structures and relationships between the objects in the image. So using a process called the spatial filtering with Fourier analysis, we can extract more detailed spatial information by analyzing how luminance changes across space in an image. Now let's break the image, uh, image of the cat down to multiple levels of detail by filtering the image by different spatial frequency content with Fourier analysis. 
So the graph in the middle shows a kind of a summary characteristic of a filter where it filters out higher frequency information and passes only lower frequency information. So here, you know, this is uh, you know, where the lower, lower frequency spatial frequency is and the spatial frequency content increases this way. So this, so basically this filter only envelopes um, some lower spatial frequency content on the left and it filters out the high frequency information information right so now <clears throat> if the, uh, the, uh, the image on the left go through the filter and then now the image on the right is the result of low pass filtering um, of the you know left image you know where only low spatial frequency information is left as a result uh, the filtered image is quite blurry and lost all the fine details and only shows the overall structure of a scene where the luminance changes slowly and smoothly. Now, we can make a filter so that only middle spatial frequency information can pass, right? So only the middle spatial frequency, now low spatial frequency and high spatial frequency information, uh, you know, they filter out by this um, filter and this kind of filter is known as bandpass filter so the resulting image is this um, which is still blurry but now the overall shape of the uh, the overall shape of uh, the cat and the dot pattern on the cat looks clearer than before and now they kind of start to kind of be distinguished from the background And finally, um, so we have high a high pass filter, uh, which only um, contain the high spatial frequency information, and cutting out the filtering out all the low spatial frequency information on the left. So let's just uh, feed this image to this filter, and the image on the right. Now we can see the sharp contour and boundaries of objects and patterns. But now the information about slow fluctuation in overall luminance is lost. So any image, image forming optical system, um, including the human eye, create less than perfect images. So in general, what optical systems do is basically transfer the light pattern in the object. So in this process, some information of the image is lost and typically the lost information is contrast so here this figure um, is a kind of a cartoon depiction of testing the quality of an optical system so lens of the camera right so in this process you first need to choose a set of test sine wave gratings of 100 percent contrast with various spatial frequencies then you pass them through one by one and uh, through the optical system one by one and observe the image formed by the system and when we look at the image after the optical system then we will see that the resulting image is still the same sinusoidal pattern with the same spatial frequency orientation and phase but with a slightly less contrast and the amount of loss in contrast increases as the spatial frequency increases so now here the left uh, column so on the left side we have a different depiction of the testing grading so here we have um, the square wave grading right in fact with 100 uh, percent contrast and this actually shows the um, the, the two-dimensional rendition of the contract profile, the luminous profile of this square wave grating, right? So top here is a white and bottom here is black. And the difference between this, um, you know, uh, the size of this valley, right? Um, or the uh, notch is basically the contrast. And it is 100% before it goes through the camera lens, right? After this square wave grating goes through the, uh, the camera lens, then the resulting image is this.
right? Now, the sharp boundary between the black and white bar now actually disappears, and they actually smooth it out following a smooth sine wave grading. And also, the contrast of the original image is somewhat lost, right, compared to the square wave grading. So say there's about like 10% loss in contrast compared to the previous, the, the original square wave grading, right? And this is a, a low spatial frequency, right? Um, the, 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 the width of the bar is actually kind of a wider, so this represents low spatial frequency information. On the other hand, we have high spatial frequency grading, another square wave, square wave, uh, square wave grading going through this same camera, and the resulting image is actually this, which is quite faint uh, um, compared to the original square wave grading, right? Now, this image is actually lost 80% of the original contrast. Um, so at, compared to this low spatial frequency grading, um, this one lost a lot more contrast uh, because uh, because this is a uh, you know high spatial frequency information. So this is actually kind of a general rule that um, any optical device actually lose contrast information and the amount um, amount of contrast um, you know lost from this transfer through the optical system uh, can be quantified as a modulation transfer function. So here is an example of how contrast is transferred from object to image. Um, and then this is a, you know, a varying with a spatial frequency. Uh, the word modulation here is the same as contrast. Engineers use modulation instead of a contrast, uh, denoting the fact that the contrast is a result of the amplitude modulation of a sine wave grading. And note that the uh, contrast of the test objects are all 100%, right? And that's all 100%. But um, when they are transferred through any optical system, then you'll notice that there's a loss in contrast. And higher the frequencies, the more contrast is lost. And this characteristic, the, the relative loss of contrast in the image, um, compared to that of the object, it can be quantified by this modulation transfer function, which is the ratio of the image contrast to the original object contrast. So this modulation transfer, this ratio is plotted against the spatial frequency, and the unit of the spatial frequency is cycles per visual degree angle, right? So if uh, an optical system is um, perfect, right? Uh, the, the ideal optical system, there will be no loss in this modulation transfer. So this perfect optical system will transfer all the information from the original image or object uh, when it is going through that system. However, uh, the actual uh, optical system actually follows this modulation transfer function where uh, the lowest frequency information is preserved pretty well, but um, this ratio is just going down as the spatial frequency of the object increases. So human visual system also has similar optics. So this figure illustrates the concept of uh, modulation transfer with a human eye. So the test pattern shown here includes a range of low to high spatial frequency sine wave gradings from left to right. As you can see, so this is low spatial frequency. And as we go along this way, we can see that the spatial frequency information increases. And you know, when this image is going through the eye, right, then 
the resulting uh, image shows a similar pattern except that it has lower contrast especially at the higher spatial frequencies right in fact so much contrast is lost at the highest spatial frequencies that the stripes are no longer visible right so this is just a plain gray so the contrast transferred from object to image uh, for a full range of special frequencies is plotted in the uh, graphs uh, uh, graphs down here, right? So this is the uh, modulation transfer function of the eye, uh, which characterizes the optical imaging performance of the eye. So uh, these two graphs are the same graphs, but the graph on the left is plotted on a linear scale, uh, whereas the one on the left, the y-axis is a log scaled. So that's a kind of a semi-log plot, and this is a linear, linear plot. This is a log, linear plot. So um, note that some of the characteristics of this example, uh, the um, eye's modulation transfer function. So the modulation transfer at the lowest spatial frequency, right, up here is essentially 100%, but it drops off as the spatial frequency increases quite quickly and drops to zero about the um, the 70 cycles per degree, right? So that is a solid line. And the spatial frequency uh, where the um, modulation transfer function drops to zero, so where it cuts the x-axis is known as the cutoff spatial frequency. The dotted line, um, represents another modulation transfer function of an eye with a slight amount of uncorrected refractive error. So the solid line is the emetropes, uh, uh, and this is slight myop, uh, the modulation transfer function of the slightly uh, myopic um, human eye. So in that case, uh, the optical perform uh, performance is worse, and so the image will look um, blurry, especially at the higher spatial frequencies compared to uh, the ametrope, right? So the losses, um, so there's really not much loss in the low spatial frequencies, but the myops actually lose a lot more in the higher spatial frequencies. So in this case, um, the cutoff spatial frequency is about 30 cycles per degree, uh, which is almost a half of the uh, the emetropes uh, cutoff spatial frequency. So, which is the uh, kind of a typical effect of refractive errors, and they tend to reduce the uh, the modulation transfer function of the eye at high spatial frequencies only. On the other hand, optical scatters, uh, um, uh, um, such as in like a cataract, uh, tend to reduce the modulation transfer function at both uh, high and low spatial frequencies. So this is the character, the modulation transfer fun uh, characteristic of the uh, human eye, so human optical system. However, um, human visual system is not just about the optical system, right? We can think of the retinal image as the end product of the eye's optical system but the uh, modulation transfer function of the eye only characterizes the front end of our visual system. So to arrive final perception of an object, however, you know, the retinal image should be transformed into electrical signals that are further processed by the brain. So having a good vision requires both good optics as well as healthy neural processing and so when we test the vision, we are really testing the whole visual system. And this leads to our next topic of human contrast sensitivity. So the uh, contrast sensitivity function is a measure of the overall performance of an entire visual system. You know, how um, its sensitivity to contrast changes with the different spatial scale. So we can think of a contrast sensitivity function as a uh, kind of a modulation transfer function of the entire visual system. So like in measuring modulation transfer and sine wave gratings are used to test 
contrast sensitivity. Here, the rationale um, using sine wave grading is a straight extrapolation of how we test the performance of an optical system. So, according to Fourier's theorem, or the Fourier transformation, any spatially varying signal or image in luminance um, can be represented as a linear combination of sine waves. So if we know how a system responds to a range of luminous changes in sine wave gratings, then we can also predict the system's performance to any image. So therefore, visual systems contrast sensitivity, uh, which is measured in relative difference in luminance, um, can be tested with sinusoidal gratings across a range of spatial frequencies representing the detail of an image. However, unlike measuring um, modulation transfer where 100% contrast of sine wave gratings are used, the contrast of the sine wave grating will change to measure contrast thresholds for each spatial frequency tested and taking the reciprocal of the threshold. So uh, next time we will talk uh, more about you know, what the, um, the contrast function look like and its characteristics.